video. Go, you're on. Good evening, church. Good evening, good evening, amen. We're so glad that we could uh, live stream our services, even though we may not meet in the actual church building. We are the church and we can meet like this and uh, you could see us and you can hear the word of God and, and uh, we're here tonight to declare how good God is, amen. He is a wonderful God, a faithful God. He's always present in our life whenever we need him. And let's just rejoice tonight and thank God that we can do it this way. We can reach people through live streaming. And uh, we still have our voices, and the enemy doesn't like that, of course. He'd like to stop us entirely, but he can't. Amen? Because God will have his way. Amen? We're going to sing, God, you're so good to me tonight. Amen? Let's just rejoice and thank him for his goodness, all of his loving kindness towards us, all his mercies and his faithfulness to us. How many know that God is a faithful God? He is always true to his word. He will always perform his word. Amen. As long as we stand on it, he is faithful. Amen. We don't ever have to concern ourselves about God coming through. If it's his word and we're standing on it, he will perform it on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we don't have a band or anything like that. We don't have any music, but we'll use the voice boxes that God gave us to rejoice in him. And we're going to sing, God, you're so good to me. Amen. God, you're so good to me. You've always been so good to me. I'll sing it through eternity. God, you're so good. God, you're so good to me. You've always been so good to me. I'll sing it through eternity. God, you're so good. I want to sing your praise all night long and every day. I'll stand and worship you my whole life through. God, you're so good to me. You've always been so good to me. I'll sing it through eternity. God, you're so good. God, you're so merciful. You've always been so merciful. Your blessings are so bountiful. God, you're so good. I want to sing your praise all night long and every day. I'll stand and worship you my whole life through. Because you're so good to me. You've always been so good to me. I'll sing it through eternity. God, you're so good. God, you're so beautiful. You've always been so beautiful. Every day you're faithful. God, you're so good. I want to sing your praise all night long and every day. I'll stand and worship you my whole life through. God, you're so good to me. You've always been so good to me. I'll sing it through eternity. God, you're so good. Tell him one more time. God, you're so good to me. You've always been so good to me. I'll sing it through eternity. 
God, you're so good. Well, church, just lift your hands and tell him how good he is. Father, you're a good God, merciful God, faithful God. Lord, we thank you for your blessed word. You didn't leave us hopeless, Lord. You gave us everything that pertains to life and godliness, Father God. And we receive it all, and we thank you for it. In the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for us. Amen and amen. Well, Pastor Anthony is going to come forward now and, and uh, deliver the word of God to you. So expect great things tonight. Amen. This is the season, particularly this is the season for it. Easter season or resurrection season, amen, that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, amen, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord, God is good. God is always good, amen. We are about to embark on a great Bible study tonight. So let me get my thing ready here. Praise the Lord. And God is so good. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I get into the word, I have a couple of announcements here. Uh, number one, don't forget, we're live streaming Resurrection Sunday. Pastor Eddie will be conducting the service with praise and worship. And we're going to have a communion service at the end. So, Get your stuff ready. Get grape juice. Your elements. Your elements. Whatever you have. It could be grape juice. It could actually, it could be orange juice, but it's, and bread. Okay? So, you, you could do that. And again, that's this Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, the greatest day in the history of mankind. There's never been one like it, and there'll never be one like it. So, praise the Lord. Also, on Sunday morning. Carol and myself at 10 minutes to 10. Mark your clocks, 10 minutes to 10. We're going to have a time of prayer here, and then we're just going to switch over to Pastor Eddie in New Jersey, and he'll start the service from there. And uh, uh, one other thing I want to say, and again, that's this Sunday, 9.50, 10 minutes to 10, at, at uh, Resurrection Sunday. Also, I really, from my heart, I want to thank everybody every person who's listening to me for your faithfulness in your giving god has sustained us god will sustain you when we're faithful in our giving god does it and everyone has been faithful and from my heart to your heart god bless you god will multiply the seed sown you will have no lack in your life if you're listening tonight and you do want to give that's very simple. You could text it in at, to 732-856-5050. If you don't like to text, you feel a little bit more secure, you can go to our website, AbundantGraceChurch.com, and just click on the Giving tab, and another little tab will drop down, and it'll tell you all the information. It is very, very secure website to do your giving on if you rather not... Uh, text it you could use a credit card or you could use your checking account either way amen don't well praise cash. the lord you tell them not to send cash yeah just don't mail cash in yeah. in the mail you know just times are crazy amen all right praise the lord i'll be right back okay here we are all right if you have your bibles open tonight i want you to turn to matthew to actually second corinthians chapter five and let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for the greatest, greatest week in history. You know, I'm listening to everybody saying how bad this week was going to be for the uh, coronavirus. But just think how bad this week was for Jesus. Yeah. He was scourged, he was mocked, he was beaten, and he was hung on a cross. And Father, as the word goes forth tonight, I would pray that you would enlighten people's minds quicken to their spirits the truths that are going to be presented here tonight yes. in the name of Jesus. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 17, and these are familiar verses of Scripture, okay? Mm -hmm. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
In other words, what it's saying is if anybody received Jesus as their Savior, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 11, they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Christ raised him from the dead, and this is important that we understand this, uh, they will be saved. Before one, uh, uh, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, you got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth salvation. And it goes on to say in verse 11, Whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. But anyway, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Can you say amen to that? Now, the second verse I want to read is right there. And I call this the big, this is the, uh, the great substitution verse. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And I was reading several translations. I, I don't have them here. I might have one. Just let me just see if... No, nope, that's not it, so we won't go for it. But it's, that word might means ability. It's actually the Greek word where we get power. So what did he do? He gave us the power to become the righteousness of of God in him. Think about that for a minute. He gave us dominus power, the ability to become the righteousness of God in him. Why? By confessing with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in our heart and confessing with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not that we might. He gave us the ability to do it and become that righteousness that God wants for us. And really that's what this whole week is about. Verse this came. verse is known as the great substitution scripture. So Jesus came, became the sin for us, that we might in turn become the righteousness of God in him. Praise the Lord. You know, and what I want to talk, and I always, every, every Good Friday I go through this, so bear with me, because a lot of people, and I've even, I was looking on Facebook today, and I've seen a lot of questions of how do we get three days and three nights from Friday night, you know? Could anybody have the answer? And I actually replied to one and said, listen, just tune in tonight at 7 p.m. and I will explain it to you, plain and simple. So I don't know if they're there or not, but in any event, the three days and three nights, Good Friday, something awesome has taken place in these three nights in the heart of the earth. And that's really what we want to look at tonight, just for a short period of time. First of all, uh, we looked at this on Sunday. You can't get three nights from Friday to Sunday. You don't. But you have to go back and, and, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and examine the Jewish calendar. Okay, Mark chapter fifteen, verse forty-two says this. And now, when the evening was come, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath. So in other words, what they had to do, when Jesus hung on the cross, they had to get him in the grave by 6 o'clock because it was the Sabbath. And it goes on even in uh, chapter 16, it says, And when the Sabbath was passed, now here's the thing about it, there's three Sabbaths that are taking place. One Wednesday night, one Thursday night, one Friday night, and one Saturday night. Four Sabbaths in a row. So they could not go to the tomb where Jesus was until the fourth Sabbath was over, which was the third day, okay? And they brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And if you look through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see that they said on the first day of the week, which was Sunday. Uh, John chapter uh, 19, verse 31 says, The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate to break their, that their legs might be broken and they might be taken away. Let me tell you something. I said it last week. Jesus didn't have his legs broken. He didn't die from exhaustion. He didn't die from a stroke or a heart attack. Jesus says, I take my life and I give my life. So on Palm Sunday, we looked at the fact that three feasts were taking place that day. Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. And each one constituted a Sabbath. Now in the middle of that, Friday was their regular Sabbath, because every Friday night, 6 o'clock, is a Sabbath. 
for the Hebrew people. So they had four Sabbaths going on. And Passover started on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. and went all the way through till Thursday evening at 6 p.m. So you see the conflict here. Jesus had the supper with the disciples, went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and the next day, in the middle of the night, they took him and judged him. And by 3 o'clock on Thursday afternoon, he gave up the ghost. And with that being said, not only did he give up the ghost, they had to get him in the tube before 6 o'clock because they had, a, they call it, they didn't really call it a Sabbath. They call it a holy convocation, all right, uh, on Thursday at 6 p.m. So Thursday night was going to be the Sabbath of unleavened bread. Okay, so they had to get him in there. That was another holy convocation. Okay. convocation. Friday night, again, was the regular Sabbath night. Saturday evening was a Sabbath for first fruits, which was Sunday morning. So you, what you do, you have four Sabbaths in a row. I find that interesting, okay? So Jesus had to be crucified on a Thursday because there's no way I don't care what kind of math you do, whether you do the new math that kids do and all this other stuff, there's no way you're getting three nights from Friday to, to Sunday. Okay? Now, now I want you to turn I want you to turn to Exodus chapter 12. And let's read there. And this is where it comes in about with Jesus. And the suffering that he was going through. And it shall be for you to keep until the 14th day of the month. And, and again, it was on Sunday we looked at, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Wednesday we looked at that. And all the assembly of the congregation, Israel shall kill it between the evenings. That's the living Bible translation. Okay, mm -hmm. between the Sabbath. So Jesus was literally crucified between Wednesday night and Thursday night. So from 6 in the morning to 6 p.m. on Thursday, Jesus was sacrificed because it was between the Sabbaths. And on the cross, Jesus, which happened in Jesus' passion started in the Garden of Eden. Okay? In the Garden, I'm sorry. The Garden of Gethsemane. That's in Matthew chapter 26 and Luke chapter 22. It said he sweat, his sweat was like drops of blood. Yes. You know, yes. see what was happening to, to Jesus was the reality, the reality of becoming the substitute for the human race. He was without spot. He was without blemish. And in Exodus chapter 12, we've seen that the Passover was instituted in that point. We looked at that also on Wednesday night. He was going to make, be made sin for the world and pay, pay the debt for Adam and Eve's sin. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says, Therefore, just as, just as through one man sin entered the world, in death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. Because of Adam's sin, it was passed on to all of us. And justice says that man must pay for his transgressions. That's what justice says. God is a just God. And man has to pay for his transgressions. And just if there's somebody out there listening because you hooked up by mistake tonight, I just want to tell you something. You will be judged for your transgressions if you don't receive Jesus. Okay? And on the cross, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Jesus became a curse for us. He was cursed. He took that curse on himself in my place. He was substituted. Uh, in my spot. He suffered for all humanity. Man was bankrupt, ruined, insolvent, helpless, a slave to sin. You know, I like that song we sing, I'm no longer a slave to sin. Well, every time I sing it, I, I guess I don't look at the words, and I say, I'm no longer a slave. I, 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 the song says, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I like to use, I'm no longer a slave to sin. Okay? I like that. Doesn't matter, you know. It's not a doctrinal point here. But, but we can never approach God because we fall short of the glory of God. We just could not approach God. Job understood that. 
In the book of Job, he says, is there a daysman between us that can put one hand on man and one hand on God? That's what Jesus Christ was doing three nights in the heart of the earth. Three nights and two days and he rose on the third. We could never meet the demands of justice. And I find it interesting that Job understood that in the book of Job. He understood. He couldn't go before God. He couldn't meet the demands for justice. But he knew there would be someone. Matter of fact, he goes on to say in that scripture, he goes, I know my Redeemer living. Yeah. He knows that his Redeemer was coming. Yeah. Praise God. And so when Jesus hung on the cross and he gave up the ghost, no one knew what happened that day. That strange things took place that day. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff coming, coming down. Darkness covered the earth in Luke chapter 23, verse 11 an earthquake creation shook creation shook Matthew tells us the veil of the temple was rent in half if you ever understood how long how the temple was it was like that wide that veil was not just a curtain you got hanging in your house okay and and it was rent from the top it was torn from the top to the bottom it wasn't that two guys grabbed it on the bottom and ripped it up two angels grabbed it on the top and ripped it down Okay, and, and so the veil represented the law. Okay, that the law was kept behind that veil. <clears throat> the Ark of the Covenant was behind the veil and now is exposed. Everything that was hidden for all those years that they traveled in the wilderness, that they finally got to Israel and they started doing their sacrifices was always hidden from the people. The people could not go in the Holy of Holies. It was totally impossible for them to go in there. They would risk that. You know, the story and the tradition sense. says that when a, when a priest would go in there to make the sacrifice, they used to tie a little silk sash around his ankle, and uh, he would go in there. He had bells on him. He had the breastplate on him. He would go in there. If he had sin in his life, he was dead. And they would drag him out. Now, I don't know if that's true, but tradition says that's what they used to do. So the Ark of the Covenant was now exposed to everybody. Think about that. You have to think about that. You have to meditate on that. That's where God was. Yeah, and you know. that, that God <coughs> dwelt in there. Man, if you listen to Pastor Eddie today and what he was saying, it'll rock your socks. I'm just telling you that right now. Okay? Uh, it, it, and now, here's what the Ark of the Covenant contained. It contained the manna. Manna represented God's provision through Jesus Christ. Jesus is called what? The bread of life. The word of God is the bread of life. Okay? The tablets represented the law. Well, now we have the... It, it represents now God's word. And Aaron's rod that budded represented their authority. So not only we have the bread of life, we have uh, the word of God, and we have authority over all the works of the devil. All of it. You know, I, I, I received a text message today from Cindy uh, Duval. Uh, it was from Billy Brim. And they're asking all churches that are live streaming <coughs> on Sunday to take authority. Pat Robinson actually came up with this. <coughs> Excuse me. I get excited. For all the churches during their service to stop and take authority over the coronavirus virus. Yes. Amen? Very important. So, now, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, the old temple was destroyed, the priesthood was done away with, and we are now a new temple and a royal priesthood. You are a priest, and you are a king to God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 3 to 10 tells us that. Hebrews chapter six, uh, chapter 4, verse 16 says, We can go now boldly before the throne of grace. We can go right up into the holy of holies and sit on God's lap and say, God, I got a problem. And God is going to listen to you. You don't have to go there with fear and of unworthiness. Some people say, oh God, I'm just someone. You are not unworthy. You know, I saw something on, on Facebook today and it says, when they put the blood on the doorpost in the lintel of the house, God didn't go into the house and check who was worthy. 
if you were behind that door, the blood of Jesus made you worthy. So don't be a knucklehead Christian and go out there and tell them how, men, how unworthy you are. You are worthy. In yourself, you're not. But because Jesus lives on the inside of you, you are worthy. Can you say amen? So now we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. We're the home of the Holy Spirit. Jesus fulfilled the law. The, the, Jew, the, the priest's duties ended within 50 years and the priesthood died off because we are a royal priesthood. Jesus made this sacrifice for sin forever, Hebrews chapter 9. It says, but Christ came as the high priest of good things to come with, greater, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained an eternal redemption. For this blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, I'm reading here, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve a living God. For this reason he is the mediator of a new and better covenant. And verse 22 says, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and with the, uh, without the shedding of blood there is no remission. I like what the uh, New Living, how the New Living Bible uh, quotes this. With his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, he entered into the holy place once for all time and secured our redemption forever. It's forever. Your redemption is forever. Oh, it's redemption, Pastor. Verse 22 of 9 says, In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. And redemption is to be bought back from the slave market of sin that Satan had us trapped in. Redemption is deliverance from all our old bad ways. We just need to learn how to walk in this righteousness that he's talking about here. Yeah. You know, Isaiah 53. Uh, let me turn to it in my Bible. Isaiah chapter 53. Praise the Lord. I try to write all the verses down so I don't have to keep flipping, but I didn't write this one down. But just... <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 53. I brought a new Bible down here because... Uh, Okay, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression, and he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We are healed. So, Jesus yeah. hadn't even gone to the cross yet. This was a prophecy. But First Peter chapter 2, verse 23 says, By his stripes you were healed. Yes. So if you are, you were. If you were, you are. It's all here in the Word of God. We have to understand this. You know. And like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way. <clears throat> the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Verse 9, And they made him his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. And finally, verse 10, it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. And he had made, when, he, when you make his soul an offering for sin. So this is what I, I want to get to here in a minute. Making his soul an offering for sin. In the Hebrew language, the word soul is also for the word spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to talk about here for the next little bit. Okay? Jesus was in the ground three nights, and he rose on the third day. Okay? Uh, Exodus chapter 12 says, And it shall be for you to keep it until the 14th day of the month. And we talked about this. He was our substitute. Jesus went in that ground in our place. He got buried. He got beaten. He got whipped for you. 
That's why Resurrection Sunday is the greatest day mankind has ever had. Okay? He, he had our sicknesses and our diseases. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 23 and 25 says, Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered because of our offenses and raised because of our justification. And that's what Isaiah is talking about. That's what uh, Psalm 22 talks about. Col Colossians 2.15. He disarmed the devil and made a show of, of him openly. Disgraced him. Embarrassed him. In front of all the spirits that were in heaven. In front of his whole army and all the angels. This is the one who was going to overthrow God. Look at him now. I just beat him. And because he beat him. We're free. See, Satan got thrown out of heaven because he tried to over... It's so interesting when you think about this. Satan got thrown out of heaven because he wanted to be higher than the Most High God. Threw him to the ground. What did he do? He corrupted Adam and Eve. Yes. And from that time on, he's been trying to get back at God. Now Jesus, when he was crucified, he was in the heart of the earth for three, three nights. He was doing the devil in. Okay, and he disarmed him. It's over. Satan has no more authority. He only the only authority that Satan has in your life is the authority you give him. That's right. The only right he has in your life to bring havoc on you is the rights that you give him. He became Jesus became the scapegoat. Okay, in Leviticus chapter sixteen, verse eight and ten, it talks about the scapegoat. You know, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. It's talking about spiritual death, not physical death. Although, if you sin long enough, it will kill you, all right? But it was a spiritual death that Adam and Eve first did. They died spiritually, and then they died physically. Amen. Are you listening to me? They died. Remember I, back there we talked about in Isaiah, the soul, the offering of his soul, well, not was it the offering of his soul, it was also the offering of his body. Two offerings going on there. It was the spiritual death that Jesus suffered that paid the price for our sin. Okay? It was the death that justified us, set us free, gave us a great plan of redemption, and set us on high. It's at verse 10, uh, Hebrews 10 10 says, But that we will have, by that we have been sanctified. Through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. When Jesus hung on that cross, when he got beaten and he hung on that cross, he was the scapegoat. For mankind. For yes. mankind. Yes. In the Old Testament, they would bring two goats. And one goat would be sacrificed and die and they'd pour the blood all around. The other goat, the priest would lay his hands on that goat. And actually that goat's name was Beelzebub. <laughs> would lay his hands on that goat and transfer the sins of Israel to that goat. And then the strong man, it's in, it's in Leviticus chapter 16, and the strong man would take him out into the wilderness and let him go and out there he would die. Jesus was beaten. Jesus' blood was sacrificed. Satan took him. Beelzebub took him to the uttermost parts of the earth. And, but Jesus came back. That goat never came back. It died out there with the people's sins on it. <coughs> Jesus went to hell. Because he wasn't a sinner. Because he wasn't a sinner. The sins of the world was transfer, transferred onto Jesus' spirit. Now let me explain this too real quick. Number one. God did not sin. Jesus was 100% human being and 100% man. Yeah. All right? He came on this earth and he had a human spirit. Everybody say human spirit. Okay? Spirit. And during that, and if you read Psalm chapter 22, turn to Psalm chapter 22 there. If you read chapter, chap, Psalm chapter 22, it explains it. Jesus 
all the sin of the world was laid on Jesus' sin. I hear people say, no, it was laid on his body and his body went to hell. No, 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 no. Jesus' spirit. Death. The reason Jesus died is because the sin of mankind came in his human spirit. And the, the, the result of sin is death. The re result of spiritual death is physical death. And Jesus died and his spirit went to hell. And it tells us, uh, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. So I hear people say, ah, God can't do that. Jesus was God. He was 100% God, 100% man. It's called the hypostatic union. Okay? His spirit was made sin for mankind. Otherwise, why would he say, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh and justified in the spirit. But he didn't sin. He never sinned. Jesus didn't commit sin. It was you and me who did it to him. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let me just go to Psalm chapter 22 for a minute. And it says, My God, my God, starting in verse 1, Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? Jesus never had a problem talking to the Father. Did he? When he prayed? No. Not one single bit. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime and you do not hear. And in the nighttime, in the night season, and I am not silent, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of the Lord. Our fathers trusted you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and you were and, and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm, and no man, no man, a, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. All, this is what Jesus was saying on the cross. He was quoting this psalm. And he said, and they shoot at the lip, and, and they shake their head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But, but you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while I'm in my, on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth, from my mother's womb. You have been my God, but not far. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no hope. And, and it just goes on. But here's the part. He says, I am but a worm. You know, Jesus was beaten. And that word worm is the word tola. Tola was a special worm that had crimson red blood in it. And, when, and, and it was crushed. They used to crush that to dye the king's garment. So you see the, the analogy here is Jesus is but a worm. Being crushed by the sin of mankind to have his blood spurred out that crimson red so he could be crowned king of kings. Yes. Glory to God. And, yeah. and so Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 says, Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. Remember that. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. That's Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. If you've got your Bible, you need to go uh, underline that. And this is out of the New Living Translation. Because God's children are human beings made of, the, of flesh and blood, so the Son... Jesus also became flesh and blood. Yes. For not only as a human being could he die, but only by dying could he break the power of the devil. He had to pay the price for us. It says, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, <clears throat> For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might, Bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. So what was Jesus doing for three days and three nights? Jesus was wiping up the devil. He was taking care of business. And when we, Sunday, whether we're sitting in our home and we wake up, it's the greatest event in history 
for mankind. Yes, thank you. Jesus Lord. died for us to pay for the sin problem. So we need to walk around with a righteousness consciousness, not being a slave to sin, but back having authority over sin. It was amazing grace that saved the wretch like me and you. Yeah. It was the grace of God. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. God just did it because he loved us. Because yes. we were his creation. These three nights was getting us in a position to receive part of the everlasting king, kingdom and be able to walk in all the redemptive realities that belong to us now. And on Sunday will be the culmination of the great plan of redemption and all we have to do as believers is receive it. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I praise you and I thank you for tonight. I thank you for everybody that's been listening here, Lord. And if there's anybody out there who's never received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, this is it. This is the, the best Easter gift you can give yourself in the midst of this ugly virus is to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I, I, I just know that there are people watching tonight that has never made that commitment to Jesus. And all you have to do, you don't have to get all King Jamesy and all like an, you know, you just need to say, God, here I am. I'm a sinner. I'm a wreck. I need a savior. I believe what the pastor said. And I want to ask you to come into my heart and be my savior. And that's it. I want to live for you. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be able to walk in newness of life. I want to have peace of mind. I want to have wholeness of body. Eternal life. Yeah. I want to have eternal life. Yeah. I, I want to live in heaven. You know, there's only two places you're going. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. And I'm sorry if that's a little uh, straightforward. straightforward, but that's the truth of it anyway. Amen. Only two places. And I had a friend of mine who went home to be with the Lord many years ago. He used to tell people, hell is no weekend in the Poconos. Okay? There's either heaven or hell. Your choice. Don't sit there and say, you know what, I'm a pretty good person. Yeah? I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you give everything you own away. If you don't ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your Savior, then you're not going to heaven. The sin problem. The because you have to deal with the sin problem. Yes, the blood. The blood. You have to be washed and covered in the blood of Jesus. Yes. If that's you, let's just say a simple prayer right now. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm a sinner. And I thank you for your grace. Lord, I receive Jesus into my heart right now. I ask him to come in and be my savior. Good Friday night, I ask him for it. I ask him for it, and I know that if I ask him, he'll come and live in my heart. My life will change. I will be different. And I will serve him and do my best to walk in his statutes and learn his word of God and be able to take a part of the plan of redemption. And I thank you. Jesus, for coming in my heart, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that for the first time, you could go online. If you're watching online, you could just plug it in there. One of my people at church will get to you. If not, you can go to uh, AGC at AbundantGraceChurch.com. Send us a note. I promise you someone will reach out to you pronto. Now, this is Pastor Anthony. We love you. I want to have my wife come up here and sing Amazing Grace. Hallelujah. Hope she remembers the words. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is good. We love you. We will be here Sunday morning, 10 minutes to 10. We're going to have a time of prayer. My wife's going to lead us in a time of prayer. <coughs> We're going to take authority over the devil and over this coronavirus, knowing that this is the greatest day to mankind. We celebrate the resurrection. And don't forget, Pastor Reddy, 10 o'clock. He's going to have a communion and praise and worship. Come on. And I have this in here right because it came yes. out. But... Wow, that is such a good, a good word, you know. Uh, we're so blessed that we have a Savior. And Jesus Christ took our place and went to hell for us so that we wouldn't have to. So we thank you, Lord. It's your amazing grace. Amen. Let's sing that. Amazing grace.
How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now. I was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Father, for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you did for us, taking our sin and, and paying for it by going to the grave, Father God. Thank you for going to hell in our place. We love you and appreciate it so much, Father. You've given us eternal life because of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now death has no hold on us. When we leave this earth, we go right home to your place in heaven, Father God, that you have for us. And we don't even the taste of death, Father. There's no sting to death any longer because of the, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ that cleansed us from all unrighteousness and open the gates of heaven for us for eternity, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we'll see you Sunday morning. 10 minutes to 10. 10 minutes to 10. God bless you and have a good night. Amen.